2nd of February 2024, Mufti Ismail Menk will be one of the renowned Muslim scholars will be live on Horizon TV on the 2nd of February 2024, Mufti Ismail Menk will be hosted. MashaAllah, you're short, yeah. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. 
الحمد لله الحمد لله كونما يأيسي لما نعم إلي أبرا كتوسي صوت أمة سوتي صلانا سلام زفيكي يا هشيما نتو بامي ما مغوزو تدو موسيقى وما نيتو صوتي فخاري نسي توجي فنيا نما يا كتهاري يمتو باتيا نيتو جيما زوادي كتوكا كاريما تفاني صوتي جهودي كويتو زادا إما الحمد لله كون يا ما يا إسلاما يا ما إلي أبرا كويتو سي صوتي أما صوتي صلاة سلام وزن فيك يا هاشيما متو باموي ما مونغوزو تودو موسيقى وما تفاني إني أنتمي ما نوتو سي سيتيزا Ilahi mwona karima ya ketu sinye puza Kipenzi chetu hashima mingi mesha tufunza Tufanyi ni sote hima ya kiku tekeleza Alhamdulillahi kwa nema ya isilama Nema ili obora kwetu si sote uma Sote swala na salamu zimfiki ye hashima Metupa mwema mungozo tutu musikwa wema Rie wapeke wadudi anae abudiwa Metu mwawe turasuni kututo wa kwa giza Tuishi keni kikweli dini ya isilama Kesho mbele ya jalali peponi kututia Alhamdulillahi kwa nema ya isilama Nema ili yobora kwetu si sote uma Sote swala na salamu zimfiki ye hashima Metu pamwema mungozo tutu musikwa wema Tamati tumemaliza hapa mwisho tokuma Pia toa sisitiza yote tulio sema Kini yetu kuhishika tupate mwisho mwema Nidini ya uhakika dini ya isilama Alhamdulillah 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 Kwa nema ya isilama Nema ili yobora Kwetu si sote uma Zote swala na salamu Zifiki ye hashima Metupa mwema mongo Zotu nungu si kwa wema Ya man sallayta bikulli l-anbiya Ya man fi qalbika rahmatu l-lina يا من ألفت قلوبا بالإسلام يا حبيبي يا شافعي يا رسول الله بأمي وأبي فديتك سيدي صلاة وسلام عليك يا نبي حبيبي يا محمد أتيت بالسلام والهدى حبيبي يا يا محمد يا رحمة للعالمين يا محمد يا من حليت حياتنا بالإيمان يا من بجمالك علمت الإحسان يا من نورت قلوبنا بالقرآن يا حبيبي يا شافعي يا رسول بأمي وأبي فديتك سيدي صلاة وسلام عليك يا نبي حبيبي يا محمد أتيت بالسلام والهدى محمد حبيبي يا محمد يا رحمة للعالمين يا 
na ni wengi ambao walikuwa nataka kushuhudia lakini kwa sasa tunashuhudia Naam Naam 1 2 Audio isikiki Tamaliza mambo na asalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh mpenzi mtazamaji pale popote unapotizama runinga ya Horizon TV basi ni siku ambayo wengi tumesubiria kwa hamu na ghamu ni siku ambayo wengi tulikuwa tunataka kujionea basi ilikuwa kama ndoto lakini siku ya leo ndoto imekuwa ya kweli mno basi ni nani tuliokuwa tunaemtarajia tulikuwa tunamtarajia kijana au tutasema mme au tutasema mtu mzima zaidi ambaye ametoka nchi ya Zimbabwe basi amefika na amedunda na tumekuwa wenye kumpokea katika kanda zetu za awali tumekuwa ni wenye kukuonyesha wewe mtazamaji picha za moja kwa moja tukimpokea na tukimkaribisha moja kwa moja mufti Ismail Menk ambaye amefika mjini Nairobi na hatua yake ya kwanza amekuwa ni mwenye kupiga katika jumba au tunasema katika stesheni nambari moja ya Uislamu hapa nchini inayofahamika kama Horizon TV na pia ndani ya jumba kuu ya kufanya ibada inayofahamika kama Jamia Mosque jijini Nairobi na mtazamaji kwa kufika kwake amekuwa ni mwenye kutembezwa na amekuwa ni mwenye kuonyeshwa maeneo tofauti tofauti na baadhi ya vitu tofauti tofauti ambazo zinaendelea katika jumba hii na katika maeneo hii ya jamii ya hapa jijini Nairobi mji mkuu wanasema the capital center of Kenya na vizuri sana na tutakuwa tunakuletea kanda za moja kwa moja tukizidi kuendeleza utakuwa ni mwenye kupata hotuba ya moja kwa moja utakuwa ni mwenye kupata interview na yeye ya moja kwa moja na shekhu wetu wa jamii ya Mosque ambaye anafahamika kama Sheikh Jamaluddin Osman pia kwa na kuletea kanda ya moja kwa moja unachostahili tu kufanya wewe pale nyumbani ni usibanduki na usikoni mwenye kubadilisha basi chaneli yako ili upate kufahamu mengi zaidi ili upate kuona mengi zaidi kwa kuwa ni siku ambayo wengi tumeshuhudia na tumengoja sana na kwa wengi basi wanakuwa na shaka zaidi na kuuliza je mufti Ismail Menk amekuwa ame, anatoka nchi gani ama anafanya shughuli gani kwa nini basi ameandaliwa siku kama ya leo yeye kufika hapa Kenya basi tunakueleza tu Mufti Meng ni kijana ama tasema ni mtu ambaye amezaliwa kutoka nchi ya Zimbabwe kama inavyofahamika na kutoka maana na zile utafiti ambazo sisi kama Horizon TV tumefanya basi amezaliwa tarehe 27 June 1975 Natumai umepata hiyo vizuri sana na pia vizuri sana he's an Islamic scholar ambaye anakuwa ni mwenye kueneza na kutangaza dini ya dini yetu ya Uislamu vizuri sana na ni mwalimu pia katika upande mwingine ambapo ana, anafunza watu wengi tofauti na jina mufti usisahau haijakuja hivi hivi tu basi mufti Ismail Mwenk pia vile vile ni mufti katika nchi ya Zimbabwe kwa kwa pale anapatiwa nyadhfa na kwa katika daraja ya juu zaidi ikifika katika masuala ya kutoa fatwa na kueleza baadhi ya vitu ambazo zinastahiki kupitishwa ima inastahiki katika katika Uislamu au haistaiki katika Uislamu. Pia vile vile na kueleza tu Mufti Ismail Menk pia anajulikana kama is an Islamic scholar na pia vile vile alipatwa kutajwa katika mwaka 2013 mwaka 2014 mwaka 2017 mtawalia zikifuatana alikuwa ni mwenye kutajwa kama the mo, katika most 500 most influential muslim in the world namna tumekuwa tukupata hiyo pia vile vile kumaanisha ni mtu ambaye ana usemi mkubwa zaidi ni mtu ambaye anafahamika zaidi ni mtu ambaye ni kipenzi ya watu wengi zaidi na siku ya leo basi runinga ya Horizon TV ya kipekee inakuwa ni yenye kukuletea kukudondoshea kukuonyesha na kukupata kukueleza yote ambayo yanatendeka katika maeneo haya 
basi mufti ismail mank je hatakuwa jamii ya peke yake ama kuna maeneo tofauti tofauti ambayo atakuwa anatembelea nam kama siku ya leo basi khutba ya ijuma utakuwa unaipata live kupitia runinga yako ya horizon tv vile vile kupitia facebook kupitia youtube vile vile utakuwa unaletea moja kwa moja utakuwa unamuona pale popote ulipo na baadaye nadhani ama najua hatakuwa ni mwenye kuelekea msikiti wa parklands nam atakuwa anaenda pale mida ya magharibi na atakuwa pia anatoa lecture ama inavyoaminika atakuwa anatoa mafunzo yake pale ili apate kufaidisha umma na kwa ujumla wa Kenya wote ambao watakuwa siku ya leo wanatizama basi wewe mtazamaji kama leo umekosa fursa ya kupata kukuja kuswali hapa katika msikiti wa jamii usikufe moyo kwa kuwa katika hizi siku tatu kuanzia leo ijuma jumamosi na jumapili basi utakuwa unampata mubashara utakuwa unamsikiza mawaidha yake pale popote ulikotulia usifinyane na watu misikitini usigongane na watu kisaramano taka kumuona runinga ya Horizon TV inakuletea moja kwa moja ili upate kumuona runinga ya Horizon TV inakuletea moja kwa moja ili upate kumuelewa kwa ufasaha wake kwa mazungumzo yake kwa mapenzi yake vile vile mpenzi mtazamaji pale popote ulipo na swali jingine ambalo linaibuka watu wengi wanauliza je mufti Ismail Mink amekuwa ni mwenye kusoma wapi masomo yake ni ya daraja ya aina gani basi na kueleza mtazamaji pale popote ulipo mufti Ismail Mink amesoma katika Islamic University of Medina na vizuri sana wangapi wanajua Islamic uh, University of Medina ni watu wengi zaidi na kwa ni mmoja kati ya watu ambao wameifadhi na ni watu ambao wamewekeza katika masuala ya dini vizuri sana kwa kondo maana leo tukimwona Mwenyezi Mungu amempandisha darja ya kupata kukuwa an Islamic scholar ya kupata kukuwa mtu ambaye anapendwa na watu wengi sana ya kupata kukuwa na mtu ambaye anafanya vipi
Asalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Moja kwa moja tunakuja mubashara kutoka katika jumba letu kuu ya Horizon TV. Na basi sisi tunakuwa ni wenye kukupasha zaidi na kukueleza kupitia ratiba kuu ya Sheikh Mufti Ismail Menk ambaye amefika leo amedunda kwa kuwa aliingia jana jioni lakini siku ya leo ndo ziara yake inaanza. Na mtumeamkia na basi wengi tumekuwa ni wenye kutamani. Wengi tumekuwa na ari ya kupata kumuona moja kwa moja na bila shaka rudinga ya Horizon on TV inakuwa ni yenye kukuletea moja kwa moja ili upate kufahamu yale yote ambayo yanajiri hapa katika jumba kuu la jamii ili tupate kukufahamisha kufikia sasa ukiangalia uki katika kiwango ya television yako mtazamaji basi tulikuwa tunakuletea picha za moja kwa moja ukipata kuona alikuwa nakutana na baraza la wazee hapa msikiti um, wa jamii akizungumza nao wakipata kubadilishana mawazo mbili tatu kuhusiana na jinsi watakavyoendeleza uislamu kwa waislamu wote na jinsi ya kuendeleza kalima ya la ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah na vizuri sana kwa kuwa safari yake ama tunasema tua ambayo amekuja nao mwaka huu basi ni ya kuzuru misikiti tofauti tofauti hapa nchini na bila shaka leo hatakuwa anazuru misikiti ambazo ni, ni mbili kwa ujumla kwa kuwa ataanza hapa msikiti wa jamii kisha baadaye atakuwa ni mwenye kufululiza moja kwa moja hadi katika msikiti wa Parklands ambayo kwa eneo ya Parklands kule alhamdulillah kesho basi wengi watakuwa ni wenye kumtizama na wengi watakuwa ni wenye kumfuatilia kupitia msikiti wa Alhuda itakapowadia mida ya magharibi pale atakuwa anaingia pale na kisha jioni yake atakuwa ni mwenye kufika katika msikiti wa Halingam Masjidul Rahma ambayo iko pale Halingam vile vile watu watu wengi waumini wa dini ya Kiislamu mbalimbali kutoka maeneo mbalimbali watakuwa ni wenye kufika katika maeneo hayo na watakuwa ni wenye kufaidika mengi zaidi kuhusiana na yale yote ambayo ametupangia msimu huu alivyokuja kuzuru mtaa huo tunasema alivyokuja kuzuru katika maeneo hii ya Kenya vizuri sana kisha siku ya Jumapili mtazamaji atakuwa ni mwenye kuelekea moja kwa moja kufululiza hadi katika maeneo ya Ngongrod kwa wale ambao wanaishi katika maeneo ya Ngongrod basi Mufti Menk atakuwa ni mwenye kutua katika msikiti ambao inajulikana kama Adams Masjid ambao atakuwa pale akimaliza katika ziara yake basi ukimkosa leo katika msikiti wa jamii usikufe moyo usikuwe ni mwenye ku kujawa na ile uzuni zaidi bali nimekupatia ratiba yake kwa ukamilifu na siku ya leo vile vile basi tutakuwa tunaenda na yeye tutakuwa tunamfanyia interview ya one on one hapa ndani ya Horizon TV na atakuwa anafanyiwa interview hiyo basi na Sheikh Imam wa Jamia Mosque anayefahamika kama Sheikh Jamaluddin Osman atakuwa anamfanyia interview ya moja kwa moja mtazamaji pale popote ulipo na kisha pale baadaye atakuwa ni mwenye kutoa khutba ya siku ya Ijumaa kweli ni faraja na ni zari kwa wale wahusika kwa wale wakazi wa Nairobi kwa wale wakazi na waislamu kwa ujumla wa Kenya kupata mgeni ambaye amefika 
kweli amedunda dunda na amefika ni siku ambayo wengi tumesubiria kwa hamu na ghamu na siku ya leo basi amekuwa ni mwenye kuingia na ukimuona basi ni mwenye kupendeza ni mwenye nuru katika uso wake kumaanisha ukiwafanyia watu heri Mwenyezi Mungu anakuwa ni mwenye kukubariki kupitia njia tofauti tofauti mtazamaji ni tunaimizana tu hapa tuzidi kufanyia na heri na Mwenyezi Mungu atakuwa ni mwenye kukuinua katika daraja yoyote ambayo uko ndani yake ima unafanya masuala ambayo yanafungamana na dini ima una unafanya masuala ambayo yanafungamana na akhera yako ima unafanya masuala ambayo yanafungamana na dunia yako cha muhimu zaidi ni kufahamu kwamba Mwenyezi Mungu umweke mbele na basi ukimweka mbele utakuwa mwenye kufaidika na mambo mengi zaidi kama nilivyokuarifu hapo awali basi Mufti Meng anafahamika kwa umaarufu wake kutoka maana yeye ni mwalimu wa kidini anafunza watu tofauti tofauti kupitia zile durus ambazo yeye mwenye huwa anapitisha kupitia ukurasa zake mbali mbali za social media ama nasema ukurasa mbalimbali mbali za mtandao wa kijamii mtazamaji kwa yule ambaye anamuona mara ya kwanza kwa yule ambaye anamsikia kwa mara ya kwanza basi na kuharifu tu na kukufahamisha usiwe na wasiwasi pale popote ulipo tutakuwa tunakuletea kanda ya moja kwa moja kutoka Horizon TV hadi pale maeneo ambayo ulipo tupate kukufahamisha tupate kukujuza tupate kukuenlight tunasema tunakufungua na tunakutoa taka katika sikio ili upate kufahamu je ratiba yake iko vipi na atakuwa ni mwenye kushuhudia ama atakuwa ni mwenye kutembea wapi na wapi kama sasa unavyoona katika kiwango ya runinga yako basi amekutana na wale wazee ambao wanapata kufahamishana kubadilishana mawazo naona vikombe vya chai viko pale kumaanisha hata mmoja pia yupenda chai alhamdulillah neema kweli na mtukiona wazee wetu wametulia tuli wanapata tu kumsikiza vizuri kwa kuwa anapatiana zile nasia kwa kwa ni mtu ambaye amezunguka katika mataifa tofauti tofauti na ni mtu ambaye ana ujuzi na ni mtu ambaye ameona mengi pia vile vile kama nilivyokuarifu kama nilivyokuarifu mpenzi mtazamaji nimekuarifu mufti meng basi ni mkazi ama anasema amezaliwa na amekuwa na amekulia katika nchi ya Zimbabwe na msijua ngapi tumefika pale lakini kama hujafika itakuwa bora zaidi upate kutembelea maeneo kama hayo ili upate kujua ile mazingira ni ya aina gani na vizuri sana mtazamaji nadhani unapata kufahamu na unapata kuona kanda za moja kwa moja zikidunda katika runinga yako pale popote ulipo mtazamaji mimi yangu ni kukuletea tu na kupata kukutafsiria na kukuchorea taswira kwa ujumla ni yapi ambayo yanaendelea ni yapi ambayo tumekuandalia siku ya leo basi mimi ndo rubani wako katika siku ya leo lakini pale baadaye nitakuwa nampisha Sheikh Jamaluddin katika interview yake ya moja kwa moja na Sheikh wetu Mufti Menk nam vizuri sana na kwa sasa kama tunavyopokea moja kwa moja tukiangalia katika runinga yetu basi amekuwa ni mwenye kuingizwa katika majlis hall na pale ndani basi mazungumzo yuko pale ni nzuri sana na mtazamaji na nitakuwa alhamdulillah Tu fanyeni yote mema, lo tu sisi tizamu 
Ilahi mola karima ya ketu sije puza Kipenzi chetu hashima mingi mesha tufunza Tufanyi ni sote hima ya kiku tekeleza Alhamdulillahi kwa nyama ya isilama Nyama ilio gura kitu si sote huma Sote swala na salamu zimfikie hashima Metu pamwema mungozo tutu musi kwa wema Rie wa peke wa dudi anae abudiwa Metu mwawe tu rasuli kututo wa kwa giza Tuishi keni kikweli dinia isilama Kesho mbele ya jalali pepo ni kututia Alhamdulillahi kwa nyama ya isilama Nyama ili yogora kwetu si sote huma Sote swala na salamu zimfikie hashima Metu pamwema mungozo tudumu si kwa wema Horizon TV ilo nzuri na ya sifika Niongozo ya dini ya tufunza vema Kuipenda ya tubidi wazina sema Emu la tuhifadhi da ima Emu la tuhifadhi da ima da wama Maneno ya o Horizon TV, the beacon for the nation. Introducing New Line, your gateway to the world of exquisite custom design furniture. For over two decades, New Line has been at the forefront of furniture manufacturing in Kenya, proudly crafting state of the art pieces. We don't just make furniture, we create a living art tailored to your unique style and personality our experienced designers work hand in hand with you to bring your vision to life our skilled kenyan artisan pour their hearts into every detail ensuring top-notch quality choose from an array of premium materials from rich wood finishes to luxurious fabrics transform your home with new lens elegant bespoke creations designed to fit your space perfectly join our family of satisfied customers who have transformed their homes into masterpieces new line where passion meet craftsmanship and your dream home comes to life contact us today let us create the furniture of your dreams new line crafting dreams one piece at a time One of the renowned Muslim scholars will be live on Horizon TV on the 2nd of February 2024. Mufti Ismail Menk will be hosted by our very own Sheikh Jamaluddin Osman at 12.05 p.m. to discuss family relations. Send in your burning questions on family issues by WhatsApp on 0798 974 747 and that is not all he will be the hot tip of the day live from Jamia Mosque Nairobi from 12 30 p.m. get all these exclusively on Horizon TV streaming live on all free-to-air platforms Zuku, Azam, Star Times and get us live on YouTube, Facebook and TikTok Stay tuned on Horizon TV, beacon for the nation. One of the renowned Muslim scholars will be live on Horizon TV on the 2nd of February 2024. Mufti Ismail Menk will be hosted by our very own Sheikh Jamaluddin Osman at 12.05 p.m. to discuss family relations, send in your burning questions on family issues by WhatsApp on 0798 974 747 and that is not all. 
He will be the hot tip of the day live from Jamia Mosque, Nairobi from 12.30 p.m. Get all these exclusively on Horizon TV, streaming live on all free-to-air platforms, Zuku, Azam, Star Times, and get us live on YouTube, Facebook, and TikTok. Stay tuned on Horizon TV, beacon for the nation. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله وثناء لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله All praise is due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى and we send blessings and salutation upon his messenger Muhammad ibn Abdullah صلوات ربي وسلام عليه It's a great honor to host Mufti Ismail Mank a scholar from Zimbabwe and a graduate from the Islamic University of Medina Sheikh, welcome to Kenya جزاكم الله خير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته عليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته ما شاء الله Alhamdulillah, it's not the first time the Sheikh is in this country. It's probably the fourth time right now. Alhamdulillah, Sheikh has visited us here at Jamia Mosque and we're hosting him today for Jum'ah. And also we're hosting him live from the studios of Horizon TV. Sheikh, without taking much time, we have a few minutes remaining. I just wanted to ask you some few questions with pertaining family relations. Bismillah. Barakallah feekum. Uh, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given guidance to the youth to get married. In a hadith, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ya ma'ashar al-shabab man istata'a minkum al-ba'ata fal yatazawwaj. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us guidance that we should also get married. Fankihu ma taba lakum min al-nisa'i mathna wa thulatha wa lurba'a. My question is this, some young Muslims have lost hope in marriage. Given the high cases of divorce that we hear about and we read about, what is your advice to them? بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Firstly, the fact that Allah has instructed us to marry and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم has asked us to also marry, it would make it an act of worship just to look and just to continue to search, even if you seem to be losing hope. The fact that you are looking and searching alone is an act of worship that will get you, inshallah, a great reward. So don't give up. To give up means you have shunned an act of worship. I know it is tough sometimes. I know there are more hypocrites on earth where what you see is not what you get. That does not mean you should shun an ibadah. So the advice is not from me. It's from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is Amr. That it's an instruction. Whoever is able and capable should get married. So if you have the ability and capacity, you should look for a spouse. And the, in the case of the women, the awliya ul umur should look for a spouse. And if the woman comes across someone whom she may feel uh, that I, this person would make a good spouse, she needs to speak up to her awliya ul umur in order to take the matter further. All that is part of ibadah. So don't give up. Giving up is not an option for a believer uh, because we would actually be doing a disservice to the instructions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, Shaykh, what's your advice to a Muslim who wants to marry someone who the parents do not approve on based maybe on cultural or social reasons? We firstly have tried, I'm sure you're aware of myself, I'm sure of yourselves and so many other scholars and uh, many people, we have tried to educate the parents to say that Islam, there is no racism, tribalism, culturalism, uh, even nationality and so on. If there is general kafa'a, general similarity, say you are brought up in Kenya and you belong to different groups in terms of race or in terms of uh, ethnicity, in terms of tribe, the fact that you have a general similarity <coughs> in upbringing is very, uh, is the, the mere <coughs> The fact that you have similarity is actually <coughs> the kafa'a, that's enough. The rest of it uh, is from man, not from Allah and His Rasul. So we would educate the parents to start with. Secondly is speak to your parents, engage them, convince them, 
listen to what they are saying. Sometimes they are right. Sometimes the person may not be the one who may look after you. But never is the line drawn based on race or based on background and ethnicity. Rather, it is drawn on taqwa, on akhlaq, on uh, deen, deen and akhlaq, basically. If the person has deen of a level and akhlaq of a level, then alhamdulillah, it's really, uh, uh, you know, sufficient. We normally say, if someone can afford it, they are responsible. They have deen and akhlaq, let it be. If both of them are interested, inshallah. No. So when parents refuse, we need to engage them. Today, someone actually sent me a message while we were coming here to say, my parents are not happy. They want this person to, to have a certain type of a job before they can marry me. So I, the answer that I would have is either convince your parents or convince that person to say, get this type of a job, you know, <laughs> or convince your parents. I mean, they, what else would you like to do? Maybe you can get a respectable person to talk to your parents, to oh. educate them, to say, look, you know, if the man is responsible, then let it be. Sometimes because we develop a haram relationship, when we develop a haram relationship, what happens is the, that connection makes us blinded to the reality of the person. Okay. You see what I'm saying? When you develop a haram relationship, you can't see this person is not responsible. You can't see that this person is actually not worth being the father of my children because you are blinded by a haram relationship. So inshallah, if it is halal and if it is done in a good way, I'm sure we would be able to achieve much more in terms of convincing now. Barakallah faykum. Sheikh, you mentioned a point that if a sister sees a, a, br a brother and she, see a, she sees a potential husband and a potential spouse, there is some guidance that you gave that she should always uh, go to the awliya al-umur and also seek the guidance of awliya al-umur. Maybe if you could explain who are, what, what are you referring to when you say awliya al-umur. Firstly, it is the father. The father is the ultimate wali. He is the guardian. Allah chose that father to be your father. There's no replacement. But in the case where the father has passed away or he is not available in some cases, uh, maybe he is unreasonable, then you can go to the qadi or you can go to the next male relative and uncle. Perhaps if it's an older person who has a son who is already an adult, then the adult, that adult son would take that place. So the reason is they shouldn't get conned and duped by men and people out there into a scenario that they will regret. So you need someone around you who will be that protective figure from your side. When a woman is getting married and the man knows, uh, the husband knows that this woman has uh, a, a circle of males who I dare cross the line, oh. it makes it much more interesting because uh, that she is respected. She has fathers, brothers, and so on who are there. And you know, they just have to greet the son-in-law, Salaamu Alaikum, and he knows, hey, I can't really mess with her. <laughs> but if you are going to do things on your own, chances are that you may be abused. It has happened. And it continues happening where in some people, when they do things all on their own, they are abused. And they don't even realize. Sometimes they, they, it's too late in the day and they feel we can't come back. That's so when we say awliya ul umur, Islam has made it a duty for those who are the awliya and the guardians and the, the ones who are the um, amir of the home to look after those who are under their responsibility. Barakallah Fik Sheikh, we're still on the topic of marriage, but now I'll divert a little bit and tackle on the issue of divorce. Yes. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us guidance in the Holy Quran and says imsakin bi ma'roof in aw tasrihin bi ihsan. We do understand imsakin bi ma'roof that is when you're together but we hardly see tasrihun bi ihsan people divorcing in a very in a way that pleases Allah. Yes. So what is the right way to get a divorce and what is the best methodology that pleases Allah according to the Quran? So divorce is not recommended okay. in any and every scenario. Okay. But when the relationship has become toxic and as a last resort, it's permissible in Islam. Mm -hmm. It's not frowned upon. So people say, no, you know, how could you divorce? Actually, we could. 
divorce if that is the last resort we could actually divorce and go through it but what we need to know is be respectable responsible it is not the end of the world you are not the first person to divorce and you will not be the last one if you have children there is a very big act of worship that you are going to need to engage in known as allowing the other spouse whether it is custody or access of the children without hindrance with a good heart both sides need to have a good heart sometimes we learn from some non-muslims where they are more respectful after a divorce than muslims muslims become so ugly that it can break a community sometimes because maybe a sheikh's uh, daughter married another sheikh's son and if they divorce the two sheikhs stopped speaking I, I just an example mm. and that shouldn't be because divorce is not the end of the world if you look at the sahaba radiallahu anhum when they went through divorce they were so respectful they were very respectful even in divorce we need to also be uh, cognizant of the quranic injunction uh, when you are releasing someone do it with goodness and bear in mind you know you were intimate together you you came together with the name of allah with the witnesses in the plan of, in the way that allah asked you to so how can you just release someone kick them and try and harm them after that divorce let them have a, a good life. Allah will provide this one and this one. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِن يَتَفَرَّقَ يُغْنِ اللَّهُ كُلًّا مِنْ سَعَاتِهِ That when they do separate and divorce, Allah will provide both of them from His fadl and His broad uh, you know, gift. Uh, it doesn't mean because you're divorced, it's the end. Most people, after they've divorced, they find another spouse who's better than the previous one. But again, it's, a, it's an effort and dedication don't give up keep looking keep hunting keep checking keep trying and no problem allah will grant you barakallah fiqh sheikh we don't we don't seem to have much time but one last question i just want to share with you about a situation that we're facing here <coughs> the question goes like this drugs abuse in the mostly affluent areas in kenya is on the rise in some instances parents have spoken over and over again but the youth will still go out and abuse the drugs so what is your advice to the parent on the verge of losing hope and the child who doesn't listen to the parent? I think uh, in the case of some who are addicted already, it will be much more challenging. So I'd like to address those who are not yet there. You have a little child. Wallahi, one of the biggest gifts you can give your child is to spend time with your family and your children connect with them speak to them engage them as they are growing up you should befriend them in a unique way because this in this age many parents are working they don't know their children well the children are being influenced by external factors and when it is too late we find out oh this child is doing this this child is doing that there are substance abuse like the, like what you are asking uh, sometimes it is a result of our own uh, absence from the life of that child or the fact that we didn't guide them because we were never as a guide for them so it starts early and if you go every weekend with your child or your children and you spend time with them you take them here that you have occupied them with something that will keep them away from other negative things so that is a good piece of advice very strong for those who have children who are young you need to make the time to spend with those children from a young age and as they are growing up once they cross a certain age they are now in a safe zone mostly inshallah but if they are on already addicted and you are asking what can be done wallahi it's challenging we uh, dua to allah we change our lives again we engage them we try to occupy them with something that is uh, uh, clean clean fun and also we try to help them to receive professional help it's not easy some counseling sometimes rehabilitation it's not easy mm -hmm. but may allah make it easy sure. i know it's a challenge it's on the rise to be very honest i personally believe that there are people across the globe who do not want to see the young generation come up so at at a young age they already introduce them to certain things which will which will reduce their chances of being successful in the future and these are bad habits like substance abuse, alcohol, you know that all of these, even a droplet of it, Islam, does not want you to go into it. Because Islam is a religion such that if you were to follow its rules and regulations, it will automatically make you a candidate of leadership, no matter where you are. Because you have sober habits, you are disciplined, you get up on time, you sleep on time, everything is amazing as a Muslim. 
So when you quit your faith and you have gone far and you started in ba into bad habits, then the qualities of leadership in you are, are diminished. That's why we say go back to the Quran, go back to the Sunnah, go back to the Deen of Allah and you will succeed. May Allah make it easy. Amen. Barakallah. Shaykh, we're out of time and you're supposed to get ready for khutbah. Why don't you, you're a musafir, why don't you finish our sitting with dua? Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin in Nabi Lumi wa ala Ali wa sallim taslima. Allahumma hafadna min kulli bala i dunya wa adhabi al akhirah. O oh Allah, we ask you to protect us, to forgive us, to grant us the best of this day and the best of whatever is to follow, mm -hmm. and to protect us from the evil of this day and the evil of whatever is to follow. O oh Allah, we ask you to bless our children, to bless our families, to bless our spouses. Those who are not married, grant them spouses who will be the coolness of their eyes. Mm -hmm. And those who are married, Ya Allah, make their spouses the coolness of their eyes. Bless them with children who will be the coolness of their eyes. O oh Allah, help us. Help us to eradicate our bad habits. Oh Allah, use us to serve the deen. Oh Allah, help those who are suffering and struggling. Mm -hmm. Oh Allah, grant victory to our brothers and sisters in Palestine. Oh Allah, we ask you to bless all those who are struggling and suffering anywhere across the globe. Mm -hmm. Alleviate their suffering. Grant ease in their difficulty. Clothe those who are struggling without clothes. And feed those who are struggling without food, Ya Allah. On this beautiful day, we ask you to grant us the best of what Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked Allah you Allah. and protect us from all the evil that he sought protection from until musta'anu alayka al-balaghu la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-ali al-azim wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad Allahumma salli 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 Barakallah fiqh Barakallah fiqh Ahsantum wa jazakum Allah khair Fatah Allah We'll get ready for Jum'ah insha'Allah Bismillah Barakallah fiqh One of the renowned Muslim scholars will be live on Horizon TV the 2nd of February 2024. Mufti Ismail Menk will be hosted by our very own Sheikh Jamaluddin Osman at 12.05 p.m. to discuss family relations. Send in your burning questions on family issues by WhatsApp on 0798-974-747 and that is not all he will be the hot tip of the day live from jamia mosque nairobi from 12 30 pm get all these exclusively on horizon tv streaming live on all free to air platforms zuku azam star times and get us live on youtube facebook and TikTok. stay tuned on horizon tv beacon for the nation one of the renowned Muslim scholars will be live on Horizon TV on the 2nd of February 2024. Mufti Ismail Menk will be hosted by our very own Sheikh Jamaluddin Osman at 12.05 p.m. to discuss family relations. Send in your burning questions on family issues by WhatsApp on 0798-974-747. And that is not all. He will be the hot tip of the day, live from Jamia Mosque, Nairobi, from 12.30 p.m. Get all these exclusively on Horizon TV, streaming live on all free-to-air platforms, Zuku, Azam, Star Times, and get us live on YouTube, Facebook, and TikTok. Stay tuned on Horizon TV, beacon for the nation. One of the renowned Muslim scholars will be live on Horizon TV on the 2nd of February 2024. Mufti Ismail Menk.
جيم برادرز فرقة الأناشيد Kurani chetu kitabu Kapewa wetu habibu Maneno yake wahabu Uya somani wajibu Kurani chetu kitabu Kapewa wetu habibu Maneno yake wahabu Uya somani wajibu Ni kitabu kisosha ka kuto Horizon TV ilo nzuri na ya sifika Niongozo ya dini ya tufunza vema Kuipenda ya tubidi wazina sema Emu la tuhifadhi eda ima Emu la tuhifadhi eda ima da wama Maneno ya Allah ndani tuapata hadithi na sunna pia zatajwa Tujifuza mengi tena kwa sana Horizon TV Maneno ya Allah ndani tuapata hadithi na sunna pia zatajwa Tujifuza mengi tena kwa sana Horizon TV Horizon TV ilo nzuri na ya sifika Niongozo ya dini ya tufunza vema Kuipenda ya tubidi wazina sema Emu la tuhifadhi eda ima Emu la tuhifadhi eda ima da wama Maneno ya Allah ndani tuapata hadithi na sunna pia zatajwa Tujifuza mengi tena kwa sana Horizon TV Maneno ya Allah ndani tuapata hadithi na sunna pia zatajwa Tujifuza mengi tena kwa sana Horizon TV Horizon TV ilo nzuri na ya sifika Niongozo ya dini ya tufunza vema Kuipenda ya tubidi wazina sema Emu la tuhifadhi eda ima Emu la tuhifadhi eda ima da wama Maneno ya Allah ndani tuapata hadithi na sunna pia zatajwa Tujifuza mengi tena kwa sana Horizon TV Maneno ya Allah ndani tuapata hadithi na sunna pia zatajwa Tujifuza mengi tena kwa sana Horizon TV Horizon TV ilo nzuri na ya sifika Niongozo ya dini ya tufunza vema Kuipenda ya tubidi wazina sema Emu la tuhifadhi eda ima Emu la tuhifadhi eda ima da wama Maneno ya Allah ndani tuapata hadithi na sunna pia zatajwa Tujifuza mengi tena kwa sana Horizon TV Maneno ya Allah ndani tuapata hadithi na sunna pia zatajwa Tujifuza mengi tena kwa sana Horizon TV Horizon TV ilo nzuri na ya sifika Niongozo ya dini ya tufunza vema Kuipenda ya tubidi wazina sema Emu la tuhifadhi eda ima Emu la tuhifadhi eda ima da wama Maneno ya Allah ndani tuapata hadithi na sunna pia zatajwa Tujifuza mengi tena kwa sana Horizon TV Maneno ya Allah ndani tuapata hadithi na sunna pia zatajwa Tujifuza mengi tena kwa sana Horizon TV
Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين My beloved brothers and sisters The Echoes of Enlightenment is a theme chosen for this beautiful tour of Kenya the first of the lectures being this one in the Jamia Masjid which is the biggest masjid alhamdulillah with the most beautiful faces and most handsome youngsters looking at me right now when I see the smile I don't know if the light is coming from there or from the teeth <laughs> nonetheless there is enlightenment that we receive in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you would like enlightenment in your life please connect to the house of Allah Rajulun qalbuhu mu'allakum bil masajidi One of the seven who will be granted the shade on the day of Qiyamah is a person whose heart is connected to the house of Allah. It will help you. You will have good habits. You will eradicate your bad habits. You won't have the time to commit immorality and evil. You will be conscious of Allah. You will be repenting to Allah. Imagine the enlightenment you are achieving just by connecting to the house of Allah. And if you are a distance from the house of Allah, or if you are a female for whom it is not an obligation to come to the house of Allah, you will achieve a similar reward by connecting with Salah. One Salah to the next Salah, to the next Salah, the concern of it is a huge enlightenment. But I would like to tell you that from the very beginning, the creation of Adam, alayhi salam, Allah would never ever leave man without enlightening him. The echoes of that enlightenment come up to today and shall continue right up to the day of Qiyamah. What does Allah want from you and I? What is the most powerful statement? It has to be a statement of enlightenment that every prophet was asked to repeat. If there is something that every single prophet was asked to say to his people, I need to know it. Imagine, who gave the statement? It is Allah, His word. So there has to be something when He says, we will send you prophet after prophet with some message. Allah says in the Quran, 
فإما يأتينكم مني هدى فمن اتبع هدايا فلا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون whenever guidance comes to you from me Allah says so whoever will follow that guidance two things I guarantee for that person لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون no fear upon that person and they will not be sad not be sad in this world and not be sad in the hereafter in other words they will achieve contentment this means if I follow the guidance of Allah the enlightenment I will always be content no matter what happens in my life when I get something Alhamdulillah when I lose something Alhamdulillah when I am elevated Alhamdulillah I'm not arrogant when I'm dropped Alhamdulillah I'm not depressed I will adjust because Allah Almighty is in control so what is it what is this Huda let's go back to the same Quran and we believe in the Quran 114 surahs from Surah Al-Fatiha right to Surah Al-Nas all of them we believe in them we adopt them we understand them we will memorize them when we are connected to them we will achieve the greatest closeness to Allah Almighty khayrukum man ta'allama al-Qur'an wa 'allamahu the best from amongst you are those who learn the Quran and teach it anything and everything connected to the Quran you need to be involved may Allah Almighty grant us ease so Allah says وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِن قَبْلِكَ مِن رَسُولٍ إِلَّا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَاعْبُدُونَ That is the enlightenment. We have never sent a messenger before you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, except that we instructed him something. To tell his people, La ilaha illa ana fa'buduni. Allah says, I told them to tell their people, there is none worthy of worship besides me, so worship me, which means worship Allah. So Allah wants us to worship him alone, that's all. That is the core enlightenment. That is the message that every single prophet brought. Adam alayhi salam, he had children. Some narrations say he had 40 children. And some narrations take it a little bit this way, that way. But the most correct from what we have learned from Ibn Kathir in Al-Bidaya wa Nihaya, where he says, Hawa alayhi salam gave birth 20 times. Each time there was a male and a female, twins. And the law at the time was very different from what it is now. You, we have today something called a mahram. A mahram is a person very closely related to you whom you are not allowed to marry. Closely related. Your child, right? Your grandchild, your sibling, your uncle and aunt. You can't marry them. Too close. At that time, there was permissibility to marry someone born from another womb. Another gestation period, but not with you. So whoever was born with you, say you are the twin. So you, they're two, boy and girl. The two of you cannot marry, but someone born separately, they, the one from here would be allowed to marry one from here. That was at the beginning. If you sit and you think about how it is, it's just unique. It's from Allah. Nonetheless, Adam alayhi salam warned his own children about worshipping Allah alone. Sheath alayhi salam who came thereafter warned his people and his cousins to worship Allah alone. Nuh alayhi salam spent 950 years. What was he telling his people? He says, worship Allah alone. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ فَقَالَ يَا قَوْمِ اعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مَا لَكُمْ we sent Nuh to his people, Noah. What did he say? Oh, my people, don't worship anyone besides Allah. You don't have a Lord besides your maker. You can only worship the one who made you. That's it. What about the others? Let's all of them. Allah says, 
They all told their people one by one, "Ubudu Allah ma lakum min ilahin ghayruhu, afala tattaqun, afala taqilun." The Quran has so many verses. Worship Allah, the one who made you. That's why, as a Muslim, what is unique about Islam? What is this beautiful enlightenment that is drawing people closer and closer towards the Deen of Allah and letting them come in droves the Deen of Allah? It is the connection that you and I are taught to have between you and the one who made you. Allah says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. In the first surah of the Quran and the first verse, those who say Bismillah is a verse, they will say it's the second verse. But it's the first verse besides the Bismillah. Even if you look at the Bismillah, you have Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. You have in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, the most merciful in a all encompassing way and the most merciful in a specialized way. But when you say Alhamdulillahi Rabbi Al Alameen, Rabb is referring to the one in absolute control of everything in existence. Rabbun. He created you, he feeds you, he gives you drink, he sustains you, he cherishes you, he provides for you, he cures you when you are ill, and he has absolute control of everything. All of this together is Rabbun. So when I say all praise is due to Rabbun, it is definitely due to Rabbun. It's common logic. All praise can only be due to some deity who made me. That's it. It cannot be due in a holistic way to anyone or anything else. When I'm praising you as a human, Wallahi, I'm only praising some certain aspect between you and I. But when there is Alhamdu, all praise, Wallahi, it's only for the one who made me and made you. That's it. All praise is only for Allah. Lillah. And why? Why, why does he deserve? Two things I want to talk about quickly. Why does he deserve to be praised? Why he? Well, because he made me, because he's in control, because he provides for me. I am here on earth and every human and every creature is on earth not because they wanted to be here. Not a single creature is here by their choice. You, as big as you might be, as wealthy as you might be, as powerful as you might be, Wallahi, you did not have a choice to come on earth. You were put here by someone. Don't lie. Who from amongst you is here because they wanted to come here? Not one. Which animal is here because it wanted to be here? No, not even one. Who put you here? Whoever put me here, Alhamdu, is for him. All praise is for him alone. Allah, he put me here. And bigger than him putting you here is the fact that he's going to take you back without your choice. Wallahi. He put you here. And now you found yourself here. You have no option, O oh son of Adam. You have no option but to worship him. Don't lie to yourself that you have an option. Because you, your very existence was without an option. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. You see? Your existence was without an option. Your departure shall also be without an option. Look, as you grow old, Allah says, أَوَلَمْ نُعَمِّرْكُمْ مَا يَتَذَكَّرُ فِيهِ مَنْ تَذَكَّرُ وَجَاءَكُمُ النَّذِيرُ Those who lost their way, they will be asked, Did we not give you life enough? Was your life not long enough? For the one who wanted to take heed, to take heed. Didn't we give you so many examples in your life that you need to come to us? You need to worship us. You need to change your life. You need to start doing the right things. And you know what they are. You need to start coming closer to us. Did we not give you enough life? And did the warner not come to you? So who is the warner? Ultimately, the warner, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a warner. Allah says, Right? 
Allah sent him as a witness, as a bearer of good news. And Allah says, وَنَذِيرَ Allah sent him as a warner too. وَدَاعِيًا إِلَى اللَّهِ بِإِذْنِهِ وَسِرَاجًا مُنِيرًا Calling towards Allah by His permission and a shining bright light, subhanallah, and to give good news to the believers that Allah has prepared for you something amazing. So the warner, he came to warn you, to remind you, please worship Allah alone. I told you, that is the biggest enlightenment and the echo of it is loud and it will continue forever. Worship Allah alone. Worship your maker alone. He's the only one worthy of worship. Worship the one whom you are going to return to. I remember speaking to a group of people who were non-Muslim who were asking me, tell us about worship. You always say concept of Godhood in Islam is powerful. What about it? So I said, do you know if I were to say, Oh, you who made me, you are the greatest. Do you agree? They said, yes. Oh, you who is going to take me away the day you take me away, have mercy on me. Do you agree? They said, yes. Oh, you whom I'm going to return to when I return to you, give me goodness. Do you agree? They said, yes. Oh, you who is in absolute control of entire existence, you are the greatest. I worship you alone. Do you agree? They were quiet for a while. I said, come on. Do you not agree that the one who deserves my worship, I put my head on the ground. Imagine putting your head on the ground. Putting your head, no matter who you are, on the floor. Only for the one who is in control of entire creation. Wallahi, I will do it only for him. Only for him. No one else. I promised you they had to agree to say yes, only for him. So who is he? He's the worshipped one. al -ma'lu. So who is the worshipped one? He calls himself Allah in Hebrew, Elohim, Eloha. You find the Jewish people, the concept of Godhood, they also believe in one God, one, the maker, alone. Elohim, Eloha. In Arabic, it's Allah, the name he chose for himself. But the concept of Tawheed in Islam is the most powerful concept because Islam tells you, hold it so close to you, and be very, very protective over it. Because that is the biggest echo. And it is the biggest enlightenment. Everything else will come around it. But itself needs to be there intact. May Allah grant us the sweetness of worshipping Him alone. My brothers, my sisters. The term nadir in that verse where Allah says, Did the warner not come to you? Do you know what it includes? In the books of tafsir. It includes your age. When I'm young, nothing is paining. I'm running around like this, like that. If I get hurt in one day, it's already better. When you are small, little, if they do a procedure, in a few days you're already running around and you are okay. When you grow a little bit older, what happens? Your bones begin to ache. Allah says, An-Nadir. Your hair becomes gray. Your back begins to cave in a little bit. You need a stick. It's normal. It's okay. Allah loves you. If all of those things brought you closer to Allah, good news to you, you will go to Jannatul Firdaus. Allah says you will be there forever and ever. What a beautiful place. Allah prepared for you. Don't be ashamed. Don't be sad. لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون. No fear, no sadness at all. No need. Why? Did you not try? Did you do tauba? Did you ask Allah forgiveness? Yes. You are in a good place, inshallah. You asked Allah forgiveness. You are in a good place. Someone came to me one day, an elderly man, and it's a true story. He said, "You know what? I am old. I'm losing hope. Shaitan keeps coming to me to tell me Allah did not forgive you." I heard you say that don't allow shaitan to come and make you think you are not forgiven because that's one of the traps of Allah. Sometimes to think Allah did not forgive you is worse than the sin you committed because now you are doubting one of the names and qualities of Allah, which is worse. If someone committed adultery, it's a major sin. Someone was drinking alcohol, intoxicants, drugs, gambling, whatever. You know the list of major sins. If someone did those, they are major sins. 
but they know Allah I will ask him forgiveness so I am asking him he is Rahmanun Rahimun he says la taqnatu do not lose hope fi rawh fi rahmatillahi in the mercy of Allah لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا. so if they lost hope, what are they doing? they are insulting Allah. don't lose hope. so the uncle tells me, tell me something that will calm my heart. I told him, uncle, the fact that you asked Allah's forgiveness, He has wiped that sin. when we repeat, oh Allah forgive me, it's only because we are more embarrassed. Not because we are doubting Allah's mercy. When you repeat, oh Allah, forgive me, forgive me, what I did was bad. He elevates your status higher. But the sin was wiped out the first time that you sought the forgiveness of Allah. This is what we are taught. Don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Adam alayhi salam came in. And wallahi, his entire existence was a lesson on those lines. Let me prove it to you. When he was made, he was not born. He was created. Adam alayhi salam, the only creature, the only human being, should I say, the only human being, he was made. Allah blew the soul in him and he came to life in a certain way. But he was already tall, big, and Allah says, Allama Adam al asma akullaha. We taught him the names of everything. So when he opened his eyes, he already knew everything. Today they say technology is advanced. One brother told me a day will come, they will put a chip in your ear when you are born and you will start talking. I said, no, 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 no. It can't be that far. That's a little bit much. They said, don't, don't misjudge and misunderstand. It can happen. They now have chips inside to read your mind. Do you know that? May Allah forgive us. I still told them, no, you can't read my mind, not mine. They say we have a lie detector. I said, Wallahi, these lie detectors, they are liars. May Allah grant us ease. The point I am raising is when Adam alayhi salam was created by Allah, Allah created him where? Where was he? Where was he? A place known as the garden. The garden, Jannah, a place known as Jannah. The scholars have spoken about which Jannah it was. I'm not going to go into the debate. We call it Jannatul Ibtila. It was a certain Jannah, a certain paradise that Allah made for him to do what he wanted to do. Because the Jannatul Khuld and the Jannah that is everlasting that we are going to go in, there was nothing haram in it at all. But this particular place, Allah made one thing haram. Allah told him, Adam, you and your spouse, Hawa, Hawa came after a certain time. Allah says, you know what? فَكُلَا مِنْهَا رَغَدًا حَيْثُ شِئْتُمَا Eat what you want. Do what you like. This is Jannah. Enjoy. Allah says, وَلَا تَقْرَبَا هَذِهِ الشَّجَرَ Just one thing don't do. This tree, don't go close to it. That's all. What did he do? What did he do? The exact thing Allah told him not to do, he did it. La ilaha illallah. Have you ever thought of that? Who was this? My grandfather. Your grandfather. What did he do? Allah spoke to him and told him, Adam, enjoy. Only this tree, don't go near. There were millions of other things to do, but he went to the tree and he ate from it. Do you not realize that Allah wanted to teach us a lesson? Oh man, you are a human. You might falter, but regret it. The sign that you regret or the, the fact that you regret your sin is a sign that you fear Allah, you are conscious of Him, you are worried about your relation with Allah. And as you grow older, you realize I have no option but to make peace with Allah because I know I'm going to go back. I cannot remain here forever. You realize it. I met a brother long back. He became a Muslim, but at one stage he was atheistic. He said, no, 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 you, you guys... You are very bad. And I said, why? He said, because you doom people to hell. You say you will enter hell. I said, what about you? He said, I'm atheist. I don't believe. So why are you worried? Good question. If you don't believe in heaven and hell, 
You do believe in it because you are worried about it. But you are lying to yourself, I don't believe. If you don't believe, you won't be worried what I say. Anyone who's worried about a Muslim saying that you are in heaven or hell, they believe in Islam and in Jannah and Jahannam. That's why. Deep down, low key, they believe in that. Why are you worried about what I believe? Whether you are going to heaven or hell, I believe. If, if a person of a different faith says, but why do you say we are going to hell? Do you believe in my faith? You actually do. That's why you are worried what I say. Are you following what I'm saying? My brothers and sisters, look at how powerful the message is. People don't realize they are worried about their own place where they are going. They are listening carefully to what is being said. Adam alayhi salam, as soon as he ate from that tree, Immediately he says, oh, what I did was bad. What I did was wrong. This is what Allah wants from all of us. Allah says, don't commit sin. But if you fall in it because you are a human being, immediately say, oh Allah, what I did was bad. رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Oh, our Lord. We wronged ourselves. What we did was bad. What we did was bad. And if you don't forgive us, and if you don't have mercy on us, we will be the losers. Allah says, we forgive you. Oh, Adam, forgive you. Now go on to the earth, and you will actually live there. We will continue to send your progeny. Reminders. What are those reminders? The echo of the same message of enlightenment. What is it? To worship Allah alone. And we will change from time to time what is known as rules and regulations of the shara. But we will never ever change the belief and the aqidah. All the prophets, they believe, they came to their people to tell them, worship Allah alone. We believe in the last day of accounts. We believe in resurrection. We believe in if there were previous prophets, the previous prophets, the previous books, and so on. What do we say? Amantu billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi wal yawm al-akhir wal qadri khayrihi wa sharrihi min Allah wal ba'th ba'd al-maut. We believe in all of those six elements of iman. All the prophets came with the same. But how they prayed was a little bit different from one to the other. But who did they pray to? Only Allah. What was halal, haram sometimes? It changed with the changing of time. We follow the final shara. Haram, haram. Pork, no. Alcohol, no. Something that is not permissible because it's not been slaughtered in a proper way, no. Etc. We ask Allah to grant us goodness. So my brothers and sisters, the uncle was asking me the question that I told you. When I finished to tell him, have hope in the mercy of Allah, Think good about Allah. Don't think bad. Don't think he's going to destroy me. He's going to punish me. He didn't accept my tawbah. He didn't know. Don't insult Allah. Allah says, O son of Adam, I will treat you the way you perceive me. So perceive Allah to be someone good and kind. Are you trying? Yes, you are. Then Alhamdulillah, you are trying. But when you are not trying, you ought to be worried. Because as much as old age and gray hair is an nadir, Allah says, we sent you the warner. We told you, we were showing you that you are coming closer to us. Many people die before that time. Do you not agree? How many young people suddenly heart attack dead? Suddenly motor vehicle accident dead? Something else happened dead. What happened to them? The nadir was not really there in that sense. But Allah sent nadir in another way. So this is why we say, my brothers, my sisters, be very possessive over your deen and be happy you are a believer. No need to be shy. Everyone who is on the straight path will face some form of challenge. When you don't want to do things that are connected to whims and fancies, people will tell you, ah, don't be too hard. You don't want to come to the club with us. This guy is being too hard. It's okay. I don't need to come to the club. What will you do? Wallahi, I will stand in Salatul Tahajjud rather than go to the club. Wallahi, yes, fun is permissible in Islam for as long as it is clean. I can go and enjoy my 
rally motor vehicle i will race i will do my motorbike i will go and fish i will go and run i will go and do horse riding i will go and do whatever there's so many different ways of doing things so many sports activities they are permissible for as long as you don't allow them to overtake your prayers and your duties unto allah you can be a footballer you can be a cricketer you can be so so for as long as they don't make you compromise your duty unto allah it's okay but the minute that fun becomes fun that is displeasing to allah it's not fun anymore and it's not even funny it becomes that which might result in your destruction people say come on we're just having fun they call it social 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 what social drinking have you heard that before say do you drink he says ah, only socially what do you mean only socially just say yes astaghfirullah social do you smoke ah social do you do weed he says ah it's okay we have a plantation at home astaghfirullah what did you just say you have a what at home they say no we need it fresh what do you mean fresh la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah the world is changing if it, if it is legalized in some nations it doesn't mean it's legalized in islam alcohol is legal in so many nations does it mean it's legal in islam no so people say but it's legal what is legal they say but it's legal cannabis i say cannabis legal or not legal in the nation in islam it's not permissible. May Allah Almighty grant us strength. Your body is an amana. When you die, you have to give it back to Allah. Give it back in a good way. Keep it nicely. Keep it properly. And Allah will grant you ease. I know my time is up. But I tell you, I don't feel like leaving this position. Again, because I see so many handsome faces here, just looking at me, smiling and happy. Wallahi, I'm equally happy. I see all the way as I was walking in, I would love to greet everyone. But you know, there are two things about it. It's not humanly possible. And secondly, it doesn't mean that if you touch my hand, you are going to go to Jannah. No, no, no. Doesn't mean that. Doesn't mean. So we love each other for the sake of Allah. We will protect each other. We will serve each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come together and we will spread goodness and we will really try our best to be the best of human beings, worshipping Allah alone, following the sunnah of Rasulullah so that the echoes of enlightenment can beam even through our efforts. I spoke a little bit about Adam alayhi salam today. As the days continue, I want to draw on other prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how the echo continued through the generations and for us to see it was all the same. May Allah Almighty bless you all. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah wa thanao lillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah ma ba'd. It's a great honor today at Jamia Mosque that we are hosting, that we are hosting Mufti Ismail Mink and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless him. Ikhwani fillah, Mufti Ismail Mink I used to watch his video clips while I was still studying. Now, 10 years down the line, I didn't imagine that I would sit with him and talk to him and eat with him the way we had dinner last night. May Allah bless him. But mashallah, he looks more younger than me. <laughs> Allahumma barik. Allahumma barik. So, a sheikh who are on the tarif. Sheikh is known, I don't need to tell you who he is, but I just stood up first of all is to thank Allah for this ni'mah and to thank the young people who came to be able to be guided to get the echoes of enlightenment. May Allah give us noor, inshallah. Also, I stood up here to, on behalf of Jamia Mosque, to uh, Jamia Mosque Committee, to thank the Sheikh for accepting our invitation and also to thank the organizers being led by 
Uncle, uh, where is he? Where is Uncle Foz? Uncle Foz Al Qurashi from Parklands, and also Molan Ahmed Alwi from Young Muslim Association, and many, many people. So, I'll just take one minute to share his program so that you can also visit the other places that he's going. So, Walilahi Alhamd, Bidayat Al Khair, Jamia was Miftah Al Khair. We started here at Jamia today. This, this was his first leg of his tour. And Salat al Maghrib today is going to be at Parklands Mosque, Bidnillah. And tomorrow, Dhuhr, before Salat al Dhuhr at 12, he's going to be at Masjid al Huda at South B. Masjid al Huda. And then Salat al Maghrib tomorrow, Saturday night, he's going to be at Halingam Masjid, Masjid al Rahma. And then tomorrow, uh, on Sunday, the day after, at 1 p.m., Salat al Dhuhr is going to be at Masjid Adams. And then that will be the, first, the last leg of his tour. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant him qabul. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us min al-ladhina istami'oon al-qawla fa'attabi'oon ahsana. Sheikh, uh, a lot of people want to shake your hand. So I will shake your hand on their behalf, inshallah. Uh, I, I know I'll not get Jannah through your hand. <laughs> But inshallah, I'll get Jannah through the brotherhood, inshallah. Because brotherhood is ibadah. So we all love, we all love the Sheikh for the sake of Allah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept his deed and grant him health and make him go back to his family. Salimina ghanimin, inshallah. Bona wazir. Alhamdulillah, the CS Adun Du'ala said he has nothing to say. He's very unlikely of a politician to say that. But he came for Ibadah today, so thank you for coming, Mushimiya. Jazakallah khair. Ahsan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Allahu Akbar Allah. Akbar. الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله وأعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له 
وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له هو رب العالمين وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله وخيرته من خلقه صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى الآل والصحب الكرام أما بعد فاتقوا الله عباد الله واتقوا يوما ترجعون فيه إلى الله ثم توفى كل نفس ما كسبت وهم لا يظلمون فإن الكيس من دان نفسه وعمل لما بعد الموت والعاجز من أتبع نفسه هواها وتمنى على الله قال الله عز وجل ولقد بعثنا في كل أمة رسولا أن اعبدوا الله واجتنبوا الطاغوت فمنهم من هدى الله ومنهم من حقت عليه الضلالة وقال الله عز وجل وما أرسلنا من رسول وما أرسلنا من قبلك من رسول إلا نوحي إليه أنه لا إله إلا أنا فاعبدون وقال الله عز وجل فاعلم أنه لا إله إلا الله واستغفر لذنبك وللمؤمنين والمؤمنات وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام بني الإسلام على خمس شهادة أن لا إله إلا الله وأني رسول الله وإقام الصلاة وإيتاء الزكاة وصوم رمضان وحج البيت لمن استطاع إليه سبيلا فبارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن والسنة ونفعني وإياكم بما فيهما من الآيات والحكمة أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله إمام المتقين ورسول رب العالمين الذي بعث إلى الأحمر والأسود والذي تركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما كثيرا عباد الله يقول عليه الصلاة والسلام من صلى علي واحدة صلى الله عليه بها عشرا وقال الله عز وجل إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم فصل وسلم وبارك وأنعم على عبدك ورسولك محمد أفضل الخلق أفضل الخلق وأكرم الرسول وارض اللهم عن خلفائه الراشدين الأئمة المهديين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي اللهم ارض عنهم وعن سائر الصحابة والتابعين وعنا معهم بمنك وكرمك يا أكرم الأكرمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم آمنا في أوطاننا وأصلح أئمتنا وولاة أمورنا اللهم انصر المظلومين في كل مكان اللهم انصر المستضعفين في كل مكان اللهم انصر الذين أخرجوا من ديارهم بغير حق إلا أن يقولوا ربنا الله اللهم انصرهم أينما كانوا يا قوي يا عزيز يا جبار السماوات والأراضين يا صاحب كل نجوى ويا منتهى كل شكوى اللهم انصر إخواننا في غزة اللهم انصرهم في فلسطين اللهم انصرهم في كل البلاد يا قوي يا عزيز يا جبار السماوات والأراضين أراضين يا صاحب كل نجوى ويا منتهى كل شكوى ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى 
اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه اللهم أرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم ادفع عنا الغلاء والوباء والربا والزنا والزلازل والمحن وسوء الفتن ما ظهر منها وما بطن اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من البرص والجنون والجذام ومن سيء الأسقام اللهم ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين اللهم ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين إماما يا شافي اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين يا أرحم الراحمين ارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر أقيم الصلاة يرحمكم الله عز وجل اللهم بسم الله الله لا لا تسكت الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله Straighten the rows and show the heels are all in a straight line. The shoulders are touching one another's. The rows are filled the first and then the next. وَلَا تَخْتَلِفُوا فَتَخْتَلِفَ قُلُوبُكُمْ Don't be jagged in your lines because the hearts will then become jagged. Allahu Akbar الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين والضحى والليل إذا سجى ما ودعك ربك وما قلى وللآخرة خير لك من الأولى ولسوف يعطيك ربك فترضى ألم يجدك يتيما فآوى ووجدك ضالا فهدى ووجدك عائلا فأغنى فأما اليتيم فلا تقهر وأما السائل فلا تنهر وأما بنعمة ربك فحدث الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين 
إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين ألم نشرح لك صدرك ووضعنا عنك وزرك الذي أنقض ظهرك ورفعنا لك ذكرك فإن مع العسر يسرا إن مع العسر يسرا فإذا فرغت فانصب وإلى ربك فارغب الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله اللهم أنت السلام السلام تبارك في هذا الجلال والإكرام لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له اللهم كل حمد وحمد 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 اللهم لا معي على ما أعطيت ولا مرد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته نعم نتازوزا uh, kuluka kiswahili kwa sabu huu ni ujumbe wetu sisi Tunaomba mutulie Huyu ni mgeni wetu Na tusingipenda kuona kwa mba kata natoka Kuna kusukumana, kuna fujo Kwa hivyo tumpe hishma yake Tumpe hishma yake, awezi kuondoka Na kama livo sema angependa kuamkua kila moja wenu lakini haiwezekani kwa binadamu lakini tumshukuru Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kwamba ametuletea na muhimu ni kwamba ni ule ujumbe ambao risala ametupa insha Allah tuielewe na tuifanyie kazi kwa hivyo toomba atoke na fikra nzuri juu ya waislamu wa msikiti huu kwamba waislamu wa msikiti huu ndugu zake ni watu wa nidhamu kwa hivyo toomba mutulie na tutaongoza na security wetu aweze kutoka kwa heshima na kwa adabu hiyo hilo ndio ombi letu wa barakallahu fikum wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh astaghfirullah استغفر الله استغفر الله اللهم انت السلام ومنك السلام تباركت يا ذا الجلال والاكرام اللهم اعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له 
له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير اللهم لا مانع لما أعطيت ولا معطي لما منعت ولا ينفوث الجد منك الجد لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله لا إله إلا الله ولا نعبد إلا إياه له النعمة وله الفضل وله الثناء الحسن لا إله إلا الله مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون سبحان الله الحمد لله الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أهد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الفلق من شر ما خلق ومن شر غاسق إذا وقب ومن شر النفاثات في العقد ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير استغفر الله أستغفر الله أستغفر الله اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام تباركت يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم أعنا على 
ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير اللهم لا مانع لما أعطيت ولا معطي لما منعت ولا ينفع ذا الجد منك الجد لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله لا إله إلا الله ولا نعبد إلا إياه له النعمة وله الفضل وله الثناء الحسن لا إله إلا الله مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون سبحان الله الحمد لله الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الفلق من شر ما خلق ومن شر غاسق إذا وقب ومن شر النفاثات في العقد ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير
استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله اللهم انت السلام ومنك السلام تباركت يا ذا الجلال والاكرام اللهم اعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير اللهم لا مانع لما أعطيت ولا معطي لما منعت ولا ينفوث الجد منك الجد لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله لا إله إلا الله ولا نعبد إلا إياه له النعمة وله الفضل وله الثناء الحسن لا إله إلا الله مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون سبحان الله الحمد لله الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الفلق من شر ما خلق ومن شر غاسق إذا وقب ومن شر النفاثات في العقد ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير